All right. Guys, thank you so much for coming out and seeing all these speakers um, and supporting your veterans and supporting this organization, Clever Talks. I am Brady Pasolo with San Diego School of Survival. It's a veteran-owned local organization. We do outdoor education, bring veterans with us out teaching, um, hiking, survival, backpacking. It's a lot of fun. And I got to be honest, I am scared shitless to be up here, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I'm really humbled to be here and speaking in front of, you know, people like Mark Cuban and Frank Gripe and all these really awesome giant of men. I'll be honest with you, I was a radio operator and artillery in the Marine Corps. We didn't do anything. I'm not an officer, I'm not special forces, I'm not even combat deployed. So it makes me even more humble to be in front of people like you who have been somewhere, who has done something. And so, I will tell you though, since I left the Marine Corps in 2006, I have definitely been on an interesting path and figured out certain ways to go. And that's what I feel like. When we leave the military, I feel like we start our journey at a trailhead. There's a trail not too far from here called the Pacific Crest Trail that starts from Mexico border all the way to Canada, 2,600 miles. And I feel that we're kind of on that journey. That when we get out of this van, drop us off of this trail that we call the civilian wilderness. We look down and we see these footprints of people that have been there before us, both military and civilian. We don't know which direction that they go, but we know it goes somewhere, right? And when we get out of the military, I like to say that we have a pack on our back and it's full of gear that the military has packed for us to survive the civilian wilderness but also gear that we prepared for ourselves. And that pack can be a little heavy too with other things, baggage that we leave the military with, like depression, anxiety, substance abuse, that can weigh us down. And any of you guys have ever been on a hike before, you know that the heavier the pack, the harder it is to hike. You don't go that far. And so that's that emotional baggage that can really weigh you down as you find your way. Now I feel like when we leave the military, we have somewhat of a map. We have point A and we have point B. We know point B is success. We just don't know what it is. What is success? It's subjective. Can success be Mark Cuban flying in on a private airplane to a suite, making millions of dollars, billions, sorry? Or is it finding a job that you love to do every day? Finding a career that you enjoy? I don't have to make a lot of money, right? It's subjective. But we know that there's a point where we need to go to. And this map doesn't exactly have it drawn out for us, does it? We have to find our own way. And we get out of the military, it's funny. Everyone says, hey, have a plan. All right, when you get out, go to college. Get a job. We're like, all right, whatever. And the commander tells us, hey, by the way, you're probably going to come back in. No, I'm not. I'm not coming back. I'm going to find my way. And it's funny, is it doesn't matter if we plan or not, we in the military have figured out how to make it up as we go. Because in the military, we have somewhat of a plan. The commander says, here's a mission. Go do that mission. All right, sir, what else? Well, don't do this or this. Now do it. All right, and we figure it out. We're really confident when we got the military to figure things out, and we usually do. We're going to be fine. So we start drawing our trail on the map and we hike it and sometimes we find a trail that ends up being a little dark and sometimes people don't come back from that trail suicide depression anxiety and sometimes you'll find other veterans on that trail hiking that you grab got to grab them by the pack and pull them back out on the trail and give them a push in the right direction or maybe even taking a little weight off their shoulders for them to help them out. Maybe draw a trail for them on their map. Or sometimes they're there to help you out. Pull some gear out of your pack, lighten your load a little bit, and draw a trail for you. I got a buddy of mine, He's a, uh, he works up in Mount Laguna, he helps the PCT hikers, the Pacific Trail hikers. And you start from, like I said, Mexico to get to him is two days. And it's all uphill. By the time they get to him, they realize they don't need all the gear in their pack that they packed. It's heavy. They're like, 
I need some help, please. It's heavy, right? So what Dave does is he takes his pack and he shakes them out in front of him and spreads it out and goes, you don't need this, you don't need that. Here, here's some tools to put in your pack. How do you trust a man to outfit you when you don't know who he is and give you gear that he thinks you need and take the gear away from you that you don't need? Because he's walked that path with them. He's hiked the trail with them. I'm hiking the trail with you guys. I'm on the same path. So let me be your outfitter for a few minutes and put some gear in your pack to help you out and maybe help lighten your load. So I don't know if you guys got pens or papers or anything like that, so I got some tools to give you. Tool number one, and keep in mind, this is gear that I have in my pack that I wanna give to you that I've somewhat figured out how to get me this far in life. So, Tool number one, communication. Yeah, we all know. We know you know how to talk, we know how to communicate, but it goes a little bit more than that. When we get out of the military, we have to learn how to articulate our thoughts and our feelings in a manner that civilians can understand us. Of course, we use terms like roger that and copy that, sir, which is cute and it's funny, and they're like, oh, that's funny, that's your military guy, you're very awesome, right? But after a while, that does get a little old, especially in some of the Fortune 500 companies. Now keep in mind, articulation, not just with your friends and coworkers, but also when you're sitting at a desk in front of an interviewer. Your job is to articulate your skills to that interviewer in such a way that they understand how to exploit those skills for the profit of their company and compensate you at fair market value. That's the nature of a job interview. You sell them your skills, they figure out how to exploit it for the benefit of the company and then compensate you for it. That's the nitty gritty. I know it sounds dirty, but that's what it is. Or you go out and find your own, uh, start your own business too. That's another way of doing it. But that communication is key. Tool number two, networking. Yeah, they told us at TAPS, go out meet people, right? And people put on these weird functions where everyone comes up with a stack of business cards, a nice suit and tie, and go, hey, I'm Bill, how are you? <laughs> nice to meet you, I was a Marine, all right. How are you? And so, that's not networking. Drinking stale coffee, eating crap cookies as an organization where everyone's looking for an opportunity, but not one to give. When you network, it's not just about here's a business card. And here's the thing, we all on our dresser have a stack of business cards this big with people we don't know, but we're afraid to throw it away. I'm like, I go through it and I go, I need that guy for whatever reason. I don't throw it away. So when you hand someone a business card, it's an opportunity to make an actual physical connection, a relationship with a person. They've given you five seconds of their time to give you that business card. So you make a connection a relationship. It's not saying, hey, let's have coffee sometime. It's saying, hey, let's go have coffee tomorrow. I want to pick your brain. But it's also the ability for you to show them what you can do for them. When networking, people ask, I want to meet you. Why? Because you got something I want. That's not how it works. That's not how relationship works. What can you give to them? Start off with that once. Say, hey, I'd like to help you out and see where it goes from there. Third tool, charisma. The ability to attract people and have a good time. Be goofy, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm acting like a retard right now, a goofball on stage right now with you guys. I don't care, because it's fun. People like that. Charisma is that ability to bring in people close and people be around you. When you're uptight, get out the military and march around like this with a high and tight, stop doing that, don't get, get grow your hair when you get out, okay? But when you got a high and tight, people are like, oh, military, uh, don't be that guy, relax, have a good time, enjoy yourself, be goofy, bring people into you. If you wanna learn about charisma, go talk to Donnie O'Malley, Rudy Reyes. Guys like those just bring people in around them and they have a good time and they listen. And it's just awesome to talk to people like that. Fourth tool, swallow your pride. This, Sucks, it is a bitter taste going down your throat when you swallow your pride. Understand that when you walk into a job interview, when you meet people, when you go to college, 
You are not a Marine. You are not a sailor. You're not a soldier. You're not an airman. You are now a civilian. You're in their wilderness. You are a civilian drawing from Marine Corps experience. That's what you are. And so you need to humble yourself in front of people. And if they ask you in military service, yeah, this is what I did. But here are my skills that help me help you. Swallow your pride. What are we on? Five? Fifth tool. This is really important. This is really personal to me. Find a hobby. I know that sounds really weird. Find a hobby. Now look, I don't have PTSD, but I have had my ups and downs while I'm out that has caused me to find some really dark places. Ones that it was really hard for me to pull out of. So I started looking for an outlet. See, the problem with anxiety and depression and PTSD, your brain chews on whatever issue it is and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse in the darkest hole that you can find. And it sucks and you can't pull yourself out of it. You gotta find something to distract your brain. So finding a hobby. I personally, look, I work outdoors. There's something called a ferro rod. I don't know if you guys know, but if you strike it, it starts with fire. I carve antler handles to put onto them. And I noticed the more intricate I get with my, my project, the more my brain starts to fade away from my issue. It's distracting me. I think of it like I'm digging a hole in my brain. And the more that I do my project, the more that I carve my antler, the deeper that hole goes, and my problem, my anxiety, the issue that I'm thinking of goes down there in it with it. And when I finish my project, it's dirt over the hole. So I buried the issue. I've gotten done, I got a cool project, I snap a couple photos on Instagram, get a couple, couple, uh, couple likes, like, yeah, that's awesome, that feels good. My brain doesn't focus on it anymore, and now I've resolved an issue in my head. Not resolved it, but I've buried it for a while. The problem with anxiety and depression and your issues is that it is like a zombie. It will dig itself up and grab you by the ankle, and so what you need to do is go back to your project back to your artwork, back to your hobby. And the cool thing is the more that you do it, the better you become and all of a sudden people are like, hey, I want that. People started wanting my antler bones. I'm like, that's cool, man. People are like, no, I wanna pay you for them. So now I'm turning my hobby into a job. I'm earning money from it. That feels really good. That helps a lot. Another hobby I do, teaching outdoor education. I did it for free of charge for a long time, teaching survival. But then my wife got pregnant, and she's like, no, you can't go to the woods anymore. So I found a loophole. I started charging for it. Can't say anything after that, now can you? So I started teaching outdoor survival, and I realized people, other veterans are like, let's go out, let's, I wanna come with you. And we take them out to the woods, and we see that when we're hiking around, a lot of weight starts to fall off their shoulders. Weight starts coming off their pack and they start feeling good. And it's not a cure-all, but we see a lot fall off the shoulders. I'm like, there's something to this. Veterans getting out, being outdoors with their brothers, being with another veteran. And so I decided to start a nonprofit organization called Triple B Adventures, where we take veterans outdoors, camping, hunting, hiking, fishing. And instead of sitting in some gray office at the VA listening to some counselor who's on pre-med doing residency throwing pills at you, you're out with your brothers, talking, interacting, having a good time. That feels a lot better right here than talking to some a-hole in some office somewhere who isn't even listening to you. Tool number six. Reach out to veteran organizations. Be a part of something. I don't know about you guys, but every once in a while I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not serving the way I thought I was. When I get out, I don't feel like I'm serving a purpose. I know we all feel like that from time to time. So reach out to other veteran organizations and be a part of it. There's plenty of them. Here in San Diego, Triple B Adventures, the Mendelton Foundation, run by Hackman, David Hackman in the back. These are organizations that can help you out. They can be part of the brotherhood again. And what's cool about these organizations, not only be cool to be part of it, 
And they go out and do community service as well. So now you're not only serving your brothers and sisters, you're serving the community. That feels pretty good. So reach out. I think there's another one called Irreverent Warriors by Donnie O'Malley. Help him out. It's going to feel good. My last tool, seventh tool. And please, seriously, take out your cell phones. Because I'm going to give you something I want you to write down. With all seriousness, everyone, please, take out your cell phones, take out your pens, take out your papers. I really want you to write this down. This is a tool that's very personal to me. If you are down, if you are having a bad day, if you feel lonely, which is the most soul-crushing experience anyone can have, that's what leads to suicide, is that feeling that no one cares about you. If you need a ride, if you need to have a beer with somebody, you want to have lunch, you need to reach out and have a human connection. Write this down. 760 815 7673. That's not the suicide hotline. That's my personal cell phone number. If you need anything whatsoever, give me a call. And if I can't help you, I got a great group of guys that will help you. I don't know some of you guys weird looks like, dude, you just gave a cell phone number out on stage to a bunch of people he doesn't know. I did because it's hard to reach out. Yeah, you could email somebody and talk to someone's admin on some website, or you can call a guy standing right here telling you to give me a call. If all the tools I gave you you use, I sincerely hope it's that one. And if you guys want, you can call me right now. Oh, Ken's using it to watch me. Thank you guys for letting me run my suck for a few minutes. Enjoy the rest of the day.